Okay, pet parents, I know you guys are ready to talk about DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis, and Biscotti is ready to rock your socks off. So hit it! <laughs> to kick things off... Snapkick! Sidekick. We're gonna define the term DKA. Now, obviously diabetic means this is gonna involve diabetes, and the term ketoacidosis means that there's gonna be an increased production of ketone bodies, two of which are gonna be acids, and when they build up in the blood system, it's gonna cause the blood to be more acidic than normal. And by now I'm sure you've heard me say that glucose or sugar is the body's preferred fuel source. Well, the most basic definition, oh yes, Pun very intended. As to how DKA happens that I can give you is that glucose can't be used as a fuel source, either because there's not enough of it or because the insulin isn't delivering it to the cells to be utilized. And when that happens, the body will start breaking down fats to use as fuel instead. And I know it sounds great to have the body breaking down fat and everything, but one of the breakdown products of fat metabolism are substances called ketone bodies, two of which are classified as keto acids, which when produced in small amounts don't really cause any harm, but when they're produced in mass quantities, the increase of acids being dumped into the bloodstream caused the blood to be much more acidic than it's supposed to be. For those of you that didn't pay attention in science class, we measure acidity based on a pH scale from 1 to 14, with 1 being very acidic like battery acid, 7 being neutral like Switzerland, and 14 being extremely basic like a white woman wearing Ugg boots drinking a pumpkin spice latte in an apple orchard. I'm calling you out Tom and Andrew. The blood pH normally likes to chill around 7.35 to 7.45, and as more and more keto acids are being produced, the pH gets closer and closer to 7, which is actually a monumental change. That change in pH can lead to some really nasty electrolyte derangements, and it can lead to severe dehydration, which in turn can cause a whole bunch of different clinical signs, depending on how long that process has been going on. And there's two major reasons why this happens. The first one is that there's a lack of insulin to take glucose and deliver it to the cells to use as fuel. So then the cells start to get hangry because they don't have their favorite food source, and they send off starvation signals that will then trigger the body to start breaking down fats to use as fuel instead. And this first point can happen for a few different reasons. Like let's say a pet becomes a diabetic, but isn't diagnosed or started on insulin treatment, or potentially a pet is a diabetic, but the owners forget several doses of insulin, or potentially the current dose of insulin that a diabetic pet is on is just no longer enough to keep blood sugars at a normal range, a diabetic crisis can occur. And the second big reason is that there's an increase of what we call diabetogenic hormones, which are basically just a group of three hormones that do the exact opposite of insulin. Eventually they will trigger the body to start breaking down fat. Regardless of the cause, DKA is a potentially life-threatening condition that leads to a lot of really bad abbreviations. Things like MODs and ARDS and SERVs and DIC and even pancreatitis. So if you notice your pet is showing signs of either diabetes or DKA, please see a veterinarian. We sadly diagnose a lot of first-time diabetics just because they come to the hospital already in a crisis.